knows that is criminal and whoever is doing this should uh, be um, charged with a criminal uh, act. Uh, that this could kill uh, thousands, if not millions, of people eventually. I mean, if you, you're inducing Alzheimer's uh, disease on a worldwide scale and you're inducing a number of diseases just from breathing it, I mean, within the lungs, you produce asthma, you produce chronic lung disease. People who have pre existing chronic lung disease will precipitously get worse. Because aluminum, as it enters the, the epithelium of the lungs, uh, is going to produce intense inflammatory reactions. And that's going to produce a worsening of their pulmonary conditions. Also, the, the uh, aluminum is absorbed into the bloodstream, uh, can be deposited in the heart. People with heart failure would get worse. Uh, people with hypertension would get worse. Uh, numerous diseases could be uh, precipitated and worsened uh, by such uh, an insane policy. But it is criminal. It's a criminal act. Yeah, no doubt. No one was asked permission to do this. This was not announced publicly. This was not uh, entered into a public forum. Uh, so <clears throat> these health uh, issues could be discussed. Uh, they just secretly uh, have done it on a worldwide uh, scale of, of, uh, of an enormous proportion. Companies for sure, all of the major energy companies find it very attractive. They're, they're investing in it. Uh, the, uh, all of the transportation companies find it attractive. The major polluters want geoengineering. It's a, it's a, if it doesn't work, that's okay, but they bought themselves time. It gives them an excuse for not doing anything for another decade or another 20 years. Some figures. Okay, latest water test tested the rain. 13,100 micrograms per liter of aluminum in the rain in 2013. Normally, it should be zero. So 13,100 is pretty damn much, folks. It used to be zero. Then it was 100s in the 2000s. And then in, uh, since 2010, it's into the 1,000s and the latest 13,100. In the snow on Mount Shasta, pristine Mount Shasta, 61,000 feet. No, excuse me. 8,000 foot level, 61,000 micrograms per liter. Four times the amount that is found in the soil up there. Where in the hell is this stuff coming from if it's not coming from the soil? Okay, pH of acid soils is 20 times more alkaline. The aluminum in the soil has doubled in the last 10 years. The rain normal was 5.6. It's 20 times more alkaline. Aluminum blocks essential nutrients. I am unable in my garden to restore normal pH, and that's because nanoparticles are now in the circulatory systems of both plants and humans. So welcome. To Short, sweet, and simple. Um, this jet engine is very simple. It's, uh, it sucks. Um, it compresses. It bangs and it blows. And so what happens is these turbines suck the air in, increasing the amount of density of the air goes into a, ch a combustion chamber where it's uh, heated and expands again, comes out as thrust at a very high temperature, similar to when you blow up a balloon and let the balloon go and it goes straight, you know, flying off. Now, when that hot air ex exits the tailpipe, uh, this occurs, uh, the contrails, not the chemical, the contrails occur because of cold air, minus 30, it takes a high altitude, around 30,000 feet plus, and that air turns to, there's a carbon dioxide and water vapor in that exhaust. That turns to ice crystals, and that's what you see, the white stream behind it. Those white crystals uh, of ice um, um, warm up, dissolve, and the smoke goes away. And it never lasts more than a minute. Usually it's in seconds, depending on outside air conditions. What we're seeing now, and I first could not believe it, and I started looking at the skies, and these are not normal. They're not natural. There's something going on. I don't know who it is or why they're doing it. All I can testify is it's not natural and it's not normal. It's got to be some outside influence doing that. Thank you. Statement issued by the United States Air Force that contrails become visible roughly about a wingspan behind an aircraft. A Boeing 757 has a wingspan of about 125 feet. That means behind the engines of that aircraft, you will see a chemtrail of 125 feet that will quickly dissipate. 
Evergreen modif uh, Aviation to miss the weather modification spraying. I got a patent number here. They call them chem bombs. Got a beautiful picture that you can go online and find. Tons of aerosol can be released in a line up to 250 miles or in huge clusters. That's when you see the interruptions in the sky of uh, batches of artificial cirrus clouds. However, behind an aerosol spraying aircraft, they stream, persist, and according to the winds aloft, will dissipate only after hours of lingering because the chemicals are falling out of the sky onto the planet. I'm also a pilot, and I've flown into Travis Air Force Base on several occasions. There's a whole area designated to replenishing these planes that fly and drop this chemical on us. It's totally guarded. The people that are loading these planes with the chemicals are dressed in complete hazmat outfits. So if this is not harmful, why are they in a complete hazmat outfit? For those of you who don't know what a hazmat outfit, it looks like a spacesuit. So they're wearing this and we're not. As a doctor, I can tell you there's been about a 25% increase in lung problems in this area and in most areas that they're spraying. Secondly, I concur about the increase in number of Alzheimer's. They have since been able to take the aluminum and micronize it, which means it'll stay up longer. But it also means, and I don't know if any of you have noticed some metallic taste in your mouth when they're spraying, but you inhale that, it goes up through your cribriform plate and into your, through your sinuses, and into the brain. If you remember eight to 10 years ago, there was this big move to get rid of aluminum from underarm deodorant, because it calls Alzheimer's. <laughs> Look what they're doing to us now. Agency I've called, I've been stonewalled. Oh, this is being put on by the UN. Now, since when does the UN have airspace activity over the United States of America, or also over any other country, for that matter? And if if that's the case, who's paying for it? And I bet you the taxpayers. <laughs> so all I can say is it's about time we get up in arms about this. So all I can say is it's about time we get up in arms about this because it is affecting our health. I look around and I see people are starting to look up and see this. Many times I've spoken about air <laughs> chemtrails and I get this blank look on my face. What are you talking about? I'm saying, look up. As a pilot, but before I fly, I look up. And so, boy, they're really out there working. If you've ever seen or heard of a grain silo explosion where particles of grain grind against one another, produce a dust, and then one spark will set it all off in an explosion. This is kind of exemplary of what nanoparticles represents in terms of the impact that they have on the environment. Because you can spread so many small little particles through the environment, it dramatically increases the surface area that's in that environment because there's so many of them. When you look up at the sun and you see a white haze, that is aluminum floating in the air right now, and it's coming from the aircraft. Now, as it happens, the Air Force conducted a study starting in 1993. It was called In Vitro Toxicity of Aluminum Nanoparticles in Rat Alveolar Macrophages. That's a real fancy way of saying testing the effect of aluminum nanoparticles on the white blood cells in the little air sacs in your lung, the alveoli. And what they found in this eight-year study was that these particles, when you're exposed to them long enough, it suppresses the ability of your white blood cells to defend you from airborne infections coming into your lungs. So it suppresses your immune system. But they also found that these same particles, once they get into your system, they can actually go through the barrier in each one of the cells. They get inside the cells, and these particles can actually suppress the ability of mitochondria which are in the cells that help to gobble up toxins and things that would be harmful to the nucleus and the, the reproduction process of the cells in your body. These processes are suppressed. And so essentially by breathing this material in, your immune system is dramatically suppressed. Now, in addition to this, the materials that are going into the environment right now, aluminum oxide nanoparticles and barium nanoparticles,